Hey everybody, this is Rhino and we're back to Pinball Arcade. So today we're looking at Dracula. Last time we did Getaway, Hot Speed, or uh, Hot Pursuit 2, High Speed 2. <laughs> For as much as I like that table, I should remember the name. So we're finally up to 1993, which just, just take a moment to look at the 11 uh, curated games from... 1990 to 1993 compared to what was probably about four curated 80s tables from 1980 to 1983. Um, I would have to sit here and hit, actually hit the B button a lot to figure out which, which tables actually wore. Actually, if Centaur was 1981, then actually there might have been closer to um yeah and I, I'm, I said there was 11 actually no there's 19 well regardless if i could count correctly there's at least a whole row of eight of extra tables now what i'm wondering is if this dracula game is based off a movie or the book so this is Bram Stoker's Dracula from 1993, based on a hit movie of the same name. Okay, well, in 2021, it's kind of hard to remember that Bram Stoker's Dracula even existed as far as a movie. It probably is the best Dracula movie, but that isn't really saying too much nowadays. Like, Dracula has pretty much fallen to the wayside as far as relevancy. Uh, the all of the Universal Monster movie characters have pretty much fallen down to the rel relevancy, and I, it's unfair to call Dracula a Universal Monster, even though he is one because Dracula existed way before then, and yeah, all those stories did. But it's an easy way of saying it. This was designed by Ari Barry Ausler and Mark Springer. Uh, this fast place, this fast playing table features a stunning playfield with an eerie graveyard, Dracula's Manor, Transylvanian Castle, and Dracula himself in his coffin. Three amazing multiball modes can be activated simultaneously for a multi multiball. Interesting, which increases the values of the jackpots and also in other shots in the game. The unique mist multiball feature begins by the floating of the mystical magnetized ball from Dracula's castle through the green mist across the play field to the abbey, knocking the ball off its path activates a one of a kind mode. Uh, this game, this is a game you can really sink your teeth into. 6,801 units of this table were produced. So that does seem like it's got a lot going on. And just beginning to look at the table, I think we are pretty much in that case. It seems like there's a, a odd coin tray. That seems weird. And then a auto launcher. We're, we're getting very much to the point where everything is either a button, auto launcher, or um, some other gimmick launcher. And it will take a couple of years to get away from the gimmick button digital launchers back to plunger launchers all right and see yeah if this is really how Bram Stoker's Dracula looked I, I couldn't even tell you I guess I haven't seen that movie and this image here it seems like you have a male Dracula shirtless and then some female and the way it's angled it looks like the female is just like sucking on his nipples which is weird um, and then this lady, she's holding like the lightning bolt, which I don't know if, what that's supposed to represent. And then this, somebody over here, a disembodied hand is holding a cross and looking just at the table art. And then you have a person in rags. And then another picture on top of this bumper, which that's a little weird because there's nothing on the other bumpers. And then I guess Dracula, a Dracula toy that will have him rise up, I suppose, happens. There's a lot of 3D modeling here 
that seems to be happening. And then here you have a shadow. Like a lot of 3D modeling around the edges, which is covering up a lot of empty space, I suppose. Um, I imagine if you were designing a table like this, you probably would throw in these 3D models and then assume that the 3D models would get reduced down to just printed pictures. And that probably would have been just as good because it's not particularly impressive by 2021 standards to have like vacuum formed plastic pieces that have been painted like that doesn't really change too much this will be slightly impressive with the, him rising from the coffin assuming he does rise from the coffin but some tombstones in the graveyard not that impressive and it honestly feels like you could have done better with some hand-painted art because that's one of the beautiful things about pinball tables in general is that you have these kind of custom famous artist things. The half face on this character is weird too. And it's also weird that there's a light flashing behind that. Um, that seems kind of poorly designed. Let's see what see we what we can see with the backboard. Yeah, these look like images from the movie. And then we have this. And then you, you have Love Never Dies, which I suppose it's worth mentioning that the sequel to the Phantom of the Opera called Love Never Dies um didn't come out till much lot later after this point, so Love Never Dies being a subtitle of Dracula makes as much sense as anything else, although arguably I would say Dracula, maybe in the Bram Stoker's movie, um, it's different, but Dracula didn't seem like he really was in love with anybody. He was just using people. This is weird because it feels like you're going to shoot the ball up this ramp, and then it's going to feed down to this ramp and to this hole and maybe even the in lane and the alleyway hmm. and then you've got another ramp up here that I guess also might go that way then you've got a gate I don't know if the ball ever can drain into the back of the tomb which makes it feel like the, there must be some balls that are just under the table getting fed into the tomb and then they are getting launched upward to this top lane which doesn't seem like it it spells something but I can't even get an angle to see what it would spell and then you have another ramp over here that goes this way so that's not a figure eight that would just mean you go in circles with both both of the in lanes. Really wish I knew who this character was. I really wish I knew who this girl was. She's I get you can't even really see her. I wish I knew why his face was half a face. It feels like they've they really did run out of space. There's no art on top of this, no art on top of this. So unless they're trying to make an argument about keeping the table a bit cleaner and, and not busy with visuals feels like the art was just done poorly uh was this a case of licensing gone crazy did they have to get every single bit approved uh, because from my mind if i was making a table and i wanted to in, in, license dracula and particularly tie it into bram stoker's dracula movie my my goal would be like well i don't even know what happens in the movie so i'm just going to have standard dracula things i'm gonna have bats i'm gonna have a him rising from his coffin i'm gonna have him seducing people and drinking their blood um and see the funny thing here is arguably the parody movie of bram stoker's dracula dracula dead and loving it the mel brooks movie is much much more relevant at this point 
whether our goal is going to be score 1 million point skill shot, score a bat bonus, score a rats bonus, earn extra balls, and activate the missed multiball. They did talk about the missed multiball. I don't see where this green mist is going to come from at all. What they what they really mean by that. The magnets would have something flipping. So... The skill shot is a video skill shot by the looks of it. And I don't know if I'm supposed to be targeting the lit lanes in the top lane or the unlit lanes. Or if it matters. It may just be a difference in points. So immediately pointing this, uh, playing this for a few seconds, I'm realizing that this table has has like no center lane shots really to speak of. It is like, so that turned on the light on the. Dracula thing. It didn't have him have the Dracula piece rise out of his casket. So it seems like that gimmick is being over focused on. Mystery. Is there a real mystery around Dracula? I, I suppose if you never knew or heard of vampires before. There would be mystery around the, the book, but anybody who's ever heard of any kind of vampire would know that. That animation to increase the score when I did all the top rollovers was quite long and distracting. Castle one locked. So, without a center lane shot, this is a table where you're going to have to get fairly good at the far loop on the left and the far loop on the right. Oops. Yeah, once again I was distracted by the visuals. This is, this is a very visually busy table. Seems like the score multiplier holds between ball and ball. Castle 2 is now locked. You are a worthy opponent. There is something inherently sexual around Dracula. Any Dracula tale, you, no way you're not going to get around it. Um, it if, you, if you do get around it, then you're basically doing something like the other Mel Brooks TV movie um, that was done much later, Hotel Transylvania, where then Dracula just becomes the joke character with a funny accent. The skill shot doesn't seem to line up with whatever rollover you hit. So it it's a seems to be a purely digital skill shot. Which is weird. But yeah, I would say this table in particular is selling itself on a lot of flash and a little bit of sex. And I don't think I'm I, I'm buying so far. You kind of have this constant drum beat of a of a background song, but then it gets interrupted fairly quickly with this uh, 
with a um, with other sound effects. So yeah, I want to get really good at doing this loop. Although half half making it through the loop seems to potentially benefit you more. We've also run into a yellow another table that's not got perhaps as much of a ball saver as I'd like. This is another table that that definitely feels like I could use a center peg, a kickback. Like this, the angles on this table aren't feeling particularly great. go like I, I I don't have a good grasp on this on this table as far as where are the sneak ins which it seems like it has two or three sneak ins to target the idea of three multi balls sound interesting but really what that I think is really boiling it down to is the fact that there's three places where you can lock three balls for, for potentially multi-ball, but the multi-balls themselves to, to start and unlock are actually as difficult, if not more, than, than a standard game would require. Yeah, once again, I'm distracted by the video mode. You see, this is the danger of having a video mode, and it would be the danger of making a modern pinball table that would have like an OLED screen or something on it and, and showing actual videos that you've got to figure out a way to both lock a ball and uh, unlock a ball anytime you want to show video and at a certain point and i think this game is hitting that point you're, you're getting a little too crazy with it um, and interesting it launched all the balls back into the out lane which and there's a green mist ball that's magnetically moving around, so at least we did see what that was all about. So I guess... I don't, I don't think I'm going to get the green mist ball back. So I guess I had to hit that ball and knock it off the magnetic path it was on. Apparently I got the bats bonus somehow. The idea of a magnet moving a pinball across the table slowly is an interesting idea. 95 million not that high, but too high for what I have done so far. So the bats bonus. It's activated by scoring loops. Each castle shot scoop. Once the loops are scored, bats are automatically activates. After the bat is played the first time, it reactivates for each 10 or more loops. When the bat mode begins, a 15 six second timer starts counting down with the bat bonus decreasing. The goal is to scare off 15 bats before the timer expires. Hitting any switch or target on the playfield scares off one bat. Hmm. Okay, so there's just a lot of things that can get you the bat bonus, which that seems like too many things, frankly. 
Can you get you the bats bonus? Hmm. So you've got this loop on the left that kind of has to be where it is if it's going to do all the things it's doing. I'm not sure it needs to do all the things it needs to do. Otherwise I'd want to see maybe this left shot more of a center line shot. Um, it's not the worst idea in theory to have an angled row of standing targets in the center lane shot because that does mean the ball will um, uh, the ball will bounce towards something else and not just weak, weakly down the center lane to drain out I'm noticing that the far right out lane for this table is actually something you could end up launching the ball down. But there is basically only two shots on the left that you can make with the right flipper. And then the left flipper has like three shots it can hit. And that's about it. So more often than not, it feels like what I'm going to end up doing is just hitting the ball upward and it bouncing off of something instead of it sinking into something. Alright, so there's the mist. Ball. I think the mist ball is actually secretly moving one locked ball from one location to another um, and integrating it into the gameplay so that there are enough balls for that multi-ball. Multi see, that is the problem with once once the tables start getting crazy with six ball multi-balls and nine ball multi-balls, this being nine ball multi-ball, um, is that you've got to have six or seven balls hidden and locked in the table at all times. Um, at a certain point they start programming the auto launchers to um, to adjust for that and launch balls specifically so that they'll lock in other locations. Yeah, I just don't feel like there's anything on this table that is really impressing me. Like, there's, it feels like something really cool could happen in one really great game, but the theme is uninteresting to me. And I don't know how you really would make a Dracula table particularly interesting. Um... Yeah, I don't know what you could do there. If anything, I think you you take the you take the opposite direction. You make a, a Van Helsing table, and you play as a dra vampire hunter. Then you can have a collection of different vampires. Left flipper shoots left, right flipper shoots right. Okay. And I'm like shooting dogs. Which I don't know if I enjoy that. I'm shooting werewolves. So they throw in werewolves as an extra element. That, that definitely did not feel like werewolves. They feel like dogs to me. It is definitely weird to be shooting a gun in general on, on a pinball table. 
video mode, but I find that particularly weird. Also, you have like the spiked skeletons, which is a little too gruesome. Welcome to my home. Yeah, but I feel like if you were, a, if it was a Van Helsing themed table, then you can have a lot of stereotypes of a lot of different vampires instead of just Dracula. Um, if you've got to focus around Dracula, then you, I, I'd probably want to make my own narrative where you had several underlings and you're working your way up to Dracula. Um, I think in the Bram Stoker movie there is a bit of that because there are like three vampire women that we were seeing being shown. Um, Do not fear me. Arguably something closer to like Vampire Hunter D uh, or Blood the Last Vampire animes might be more interesting because they've taken the vampire trope and put more characters to them than, than the most Dracula stories, movies that I only had two hours to expand on. I imagine the actual book is, is a lot more detailed. Or you could do something like Vampire the Masquerade and involve that and then you can introduce m multiple clans of vampires of multiple different breeds of vampires and species of vampires. And there might be something more, more to that idea. And see... What you normally would expect from from vampires is for them to be in gothic dress, lace, and be all melodramatic, and that's just kind of not what the actual book of Dracula was about, nor is it what Bram Stoker's Dracula is about, so this is a pretty unrecognizable Dracula as a character. because there's been so much addition Our love is stronger than death. Hmm. Hmm. I will have to say I, I don't think that the way Dracula is being depicted here even feels right, even though maybe it would, would be historically accurate. Um, it, is, it is just not in line with what you expect to see. You are safe with me. A moment's courage, and it is done. There, the vertical standing targets on the left, I, I just realized those even existed. They're gonna be pretty impossible to hit. I never drink wine. Arguably, this is just too serious a horror theme. Like, when you think about Class of 1812 and the rapping monsters, that, that's much more of an appeal to me. Uh, is this a Williams table? I guess it is. I see Williams flippers. But yeah, or Elvira uh, as a table, I, I find that much more appealing. Hmm. 
I kind of hate this left ramp though. I think you, there needs to have been a fix there. Um, definitely. I feel like the left ramp should be in the center. A little bit angled so that if you come back it back that way. I feel like you would have taken that left ramp and you would have had it go up the uh, Dracula castle which you would have wanted to center more. I feel like you should have a stake as a launcher instead of just a button uh, where you stab a stake forward and, and as a plunger. I feel like there, there should be a vial of blood somewhere on the table or a big rubber plastic bat or rats. Like, a lot of toys and gimmicks could have been on this table and instead they've just made gothic um, countryside 3D models like it feels like you're they made a design for playing tabletop a tabletop game more than a pinball table design This is incredibly distracting sound effects, incredibly distracting video. Pretty bad angles. More and more, it, it does feel like the license tables tend to spend more time, pay more time, more resources and money paying for the license than they do actually making a good table. So I, I don't, don't know what you'd really even do to fix a table like this other than change a lot of angles and just rip out the entire table design and start over would, would be my thought. It's, it's not like I can immediately think of a new gimmick that this table needs. It's just better angles. This is also a dying style, I would say, of tables in that there's a lot less shots. That sinkhole seems to trigger some kind of video mode challenge. Uh, but I don't even understand it. I'm gonna take a moment to drink some water. 30 minutes in and I'm pretty much done with this table. <clears throat> like, sure, I'd love to see this three ball multiball, this mythical three ball multiball, but I feel like I'm not going to. And there we go. So that unlocked the second ball. And what that caused the ball to do was launch it under the table. So the auto launcher, the auto launcher there popped up the, the table and shot the ball under it, not into the play field. I suppose I could go crazy and yeah it kind of sucks that you can't go back and see the standard goals but I got them all 
just randomly playing, not even enjoying it. So now we're looking for the double jackpot, 15 million werewolf bonus, which is a video mode, 30 million po point miss jackpot, which I think I only got 10 million, earn a special and score 300 million coffin jackpot, which three different multi balls means three Welcome different jackpots, which means it's less likely you're actually gonna have an opportunity to get a jackpot by a third. <laughs> Dracula, I think, was written by a woman. Um, it definitely feels like it is a romance story hidden in the horror story. Arguably, uh, by modern standards, it is a romance story much like Fifty Shades of Grey in that the old woman involved is being is in an abusive relationship arguably that would be all Dracula could be is a, a soulless monster who thinks he's in love but can't express it in a normal healthy way and instead expresses it by manipulating and throwing and drinking the blood of his victims. Hmm. I know there was a BBC, like, six hour long mini series of Dracula that was, like, the closest possible they tried to, to make towards what the original Dracula story was. And it, it really highlights why why there is not a lot of interest in doing the original story and having every element of the original story involved because the original story is long and complicated you see there I didn't press the launcher but the bottom of the table popped up and it launched the ball anyways so there is a fairly complicated system I think that we won't ever be able to see part here where this ramp jumps up and it has to fill the ball here that the magnet uh, so there's some kind of sinkhole here our ball is sitting most of the time and the magnet slowly moves the ball over here where another ball I think is stuck sitting ready to be popped up onto this lane I think and I bet that's why there is this house in front of the castle in, in the ramp That'd be my guess. And I suspect there is always at least one or two balls inside this area. There's probably not any balls inside this area. And maybe that's what's going on with this table more than anything is that there is a lot of an attempt on doing something technically brand new and the standard Q&A Q polish just got left by the wayside because of the new concepts. A table like this, since it's centered around Dracula, basically needs Dracula to be in several different scenes though, so keeping him inside his own coffin uh, and only displayed that way doesn't really work. So perhaps you'd show him in his coffin at like the launcher or in the video mode you'd show him rising from his coffin but you would want him to, to be an active participant in much more activities.
One second, I need to cough. <laughs> Excuse me, man. I'm getting a tickle in my throat. Hmm. Yeah, I am not doing well. And of course, the second you pause the game on pinball, even if it gives you the five second countdown, which is appreciated, your stride is going to be so broken. Yeah, you'd think that there would be a goal here to sire. If you're playing as Dracula, there'd be a goal to like sire as many people or bite as many people and and that there'd be like a bite bonus. And not really. You get a bite scene when you get the score multiplier up and that's it. Probably also highlights why, in part, there, there haven't been any games where you play as a very traditional Dracula. Uh, the Castlevania series, uh, part of the Castlevania series, the, the rebooted 3D part that uh, has you playing as Alucard, which is Castlevania's Dracula and the word Dracula is spelled backwards. Um, but Alucard is definitely his own personality and own character and not just your standard uh, Dracula ripoff. I don't know of any other game where you even get to play as Dracula or really even fight Dracula. Like Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines. Is a game where you play as your own vampire. In a funny way, a lot of stories are embarrassed by Dracula, even when there is a um, when there is a vampire presence. Anyways, like I I recall, like vampire. Uh, no, what is it? Buffy the Vampire Slayer, like, all the vampires are pretty much embarrassed by Dracula, uh, and barely even mention him, even though he technically existed, until Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I think, killed him. Uh, uh, I could be dreaming this up, but I think that that happened. And arguably, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer table makes way better sense. Because there's several, several seasons of, of that TV show, plus a comic book that continued the story. It'd be very, very easy to, to take characters, which that was an ensemble cast of oh, about eight characters near the end. Um, Like that that makes that makes even more sense than the Van Helsing because at least if you do a Van Helsing theme table, you're still having to create a lot of characters and a lot of other monsters to fight where Buffy went way crazier and had the whole Angel TV spin-off on that. Um You could also go with the Blade Marvel comic character that works real well too. I'm sure there's plenty of enemies amongst the Blade comics that you could make references to. Trying to think if there's any other monster hunting like shows that really exist that would be relevant. I know there is a sci fi show called Van Helsing, but I haven't watched enough of it to remember it. 
Um, I bet there was a Walking Dead pinball table made at some point, but zombies aren't really a fair comparison to vampires. Because there's never really a main... Yep. There's never like a main source of of zombies is a TV show called The Strain there are vampires with a bit of a spin to them and it's it's a little bit of a different story and I just hate the angles on this table it's been a while since we've had a table where I just kind of am not impressed Three or four tables have, though, gone that route, and, and they've just failed to, to grab my attention. So I guess the question I should ask myself, is this better or worse uh, as a table than Phantom of the Opera? Which, arguably, Phantom of the Opera and Dracula are not very different stories. Uh, or I would say Phantom of the Opera at least does focus on one main female of Christine Die that I can name, whereas I don't know the female's name that typically Dracula is chasing after. Um, it might very well be a Christine, a different Christine. I, it could be somebody completely different. <laughs> 47 minutes in, I just don't think I'm going to be able to start any multiball. Uh, the two multiball in particular. I've, I've been able to succeed successfully start the missed multiball twice. I've been able to successfully start the castle multiball twice. But the tomb multiball has left me mostly baffled. And I think that is uh, because. Because I don't know what lights the co coffin, not to, and I'd have to get really good at hitting a left shot, ramp shot, the second from the right ramp shot. And I said in the last table. Uh, that we played that almost every table seems to be designed for right-handed players this table actually feels like it's designed for left-handed players which that might be why I'm not doing particularly well on it This is a table that I think I just have to nudge quite a bit if I really wanted to succeed. Right. You have five extra bullets. Wasted some bullets, but I accomplished it. And I guess the trick was to not waste bullets. 
are just like glazing over on this table all right well what am what do i need to do let's look at the instructions at least even though i imagine i'm not going to be able to accomplish it Okay, so you're just, for Castle Jackpot, you need to hit those two right shots, which is going to be fairly difficult. To activate video mode, first spell video by hitting this ramp a mass of five times around the roll under. Then you shoot the sink hole behind the drop targets to activate it. I didn't even know there was a sink hole back there. Mm. Destroying Werewolf at the furthest distance scores 500, at the closest distance scores a million. If a werewolf reaches you, interesting. Doing all that will give you 5 million. Each time you do it, it's another 5 million up to 25 million. So they want you to get 15 million, which means basically you have to get to wave 3. Hmm. To do the mist multiple, first light mist by hitting the. You, by scoring loops. Once five loops are scored, then you can sink down there. Um, mist bolt multiple automatically lights at the start of your third turn if it hasn't been lit in the current game. No wonder I've been able to do that twice. The ball is then fed from the left flipper. As the second ball begins to slowly move across the field, shooting the second ball and knocking off it, the magnet that is moving it activates Miss Multi Ball, which being able to sense that the that the magnet is not moving a ball is a great uh, evolution of electronic uh, features. Certainly, because you would effectively have to be measuring the amount of resistance or um, magnetic flow that was going on there. While this two ball multi ball is activated, all the major shots on the play field are what 10 million. Uh, the shots that score the jackpot are the asylum. So that whole building there is supposed to be the asylum where Renfield gets thrown, I believe is his name. The castle ramp. The tunnel, the coffin ramp, that's the shot I need to get really good at. The coffin, which apparently is different from the coffin ramp, and the right orbit. Well, how do you hit the coffin? Then, and the altar. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. If two multiballs are activated, you get four multiball, four ball, multiball. Coffin multiball gives you a chance to destroy Dracula to activate it first. Light coffin at the coffin right lamp to. Uh, 
to light it score 2.5 million point coffin value the coffin value starts at this each time the coffin ramp is shot it increases so you have to hit it five times um also can be advanced by scoring the center gargoyle skill shot or by scoring the coffin lit loot bonus hmm Once the coffin light lits at the coffin, the lock will also be automatically lit by collecting coffin locks enabled at the mystery. You'd, you'd think hitting that mystery shot would be easier for as much as it needs to give you bonuses. Lock three balls into to activate coffin multiball. Each lock ball scores 35,000 points. The goal of doing three ball multiball is to spell Dracula to score a coffin jock box. While coffin multi ball is activated, the coffin ramp remains raised and with the coffin lock lit. If three or more balls are in play, each shot into the coffin lock collects two letters. So Dracula, if only two balls in, collects one letter unless the 2x lamp is lit, which the table is now getting too confused for its own good. And see, that's part of the problem, I suppose, of doubling a score or potentially increasing a score a lot by the number of balls on the tables it does just confuse how much you actually would score to the point where it breaks the the facade and that people were would be actually paying attention to their score while playing the game where the vast majority of pinball players are not paying any attention to their score really and they may be trying to accomplish certain goals knowing that that will score large, but nobody's going to be mentally calculating to the exact point what they're getting. <clears throat> How did you get the jackpot? Hmm. I guess it's probably just hitting the coffin again. That seems to be the case. So we hit the altar 15 times to get the special and then drain out the out lane. And then three million, lock three balls in the coffin, activate coffin multiple. Spell Dracula to score a coffin jackpots. When coffin multiball is activated, the coffin ramp remains lit. Yep. If two balls are in play, you get 20,000 and increases 10, 10 million per each time it's scored to a maximum 80 million points. If three are in play, it's 40 million up to 100 million. Okay. So, how do you get 300 million? Hmm. Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. 100 million. with a three ball multi ball. Okay, so the only way you get the coffin jackpot at 300 million as the final wizard goal would be to have all three multi balls going at the same time. Welcome to my home. Which that is just asking way too much. And so after looking at like each of those goals, all it really told me is that, yeah, I need to get way better at shooting the coffin shot. And if I hit the altar 15 times, I'll potentially activate something. But that's about it.
Sorry, one, one second. Yep. Sorry, I, I'm just full of distractions at the moment. My headphones are irritating me. Trying to adjust them. So, if the asylum scene when you sink a ball in the asylum causes seems to give you more points if you push the flipper then I should probably hit some of the other flipper hit the flipper when some of this other stuff happens hmm. this is one of those tables though where it's pretty much just going to be a case of if I can't hit the coffin shot a lot of times, then I'm not going to be able to progress any further or get any better at this table. And I think that's really where I'm going to just be stuck, is that I just won't be able to get really good at the coffin shots. The ball moves a little too fast. Um, I think that is a factor that you have such a straight, uh, straight in-lane ramp on the left. There, there should have been a wiggle in that. Something, something to slow down the ball a little bit. You can see that there's a bit of a wiggle higher up, but it's like they didn't even know why the why the Wiggles existed in the first place. Yeah, and I just don't want to play that table. I would be much more interested in just taking the idea of Gorgar as, which is effectively a Dracula style story. You have a demon taking, kidnapping a lady. Um, that's and a much better table hey, or i would be much more interested in just playing more of elvira which a double slide and a jackpot that's all i even need to do on this hey, so like elvira the comedic um vampire dracula s type character they start with the organ music which while that may not have been actually in the movie, and I feel like a lot of Bram Stoker's book and movie uh, elements were improved upon, uh, the organ music definitely feels vampire-ish. So why there's no music playing in Bram Stoker's is a mistake. Uh, El Elvira is an older table too, so they would have been able to steal all these ideas. Elvira is a fairly busy table, but everything is shaped for in kind of a V shape. So you're not bumping into too many things, and instead you're actually making it up ramps. The lanes, uh, the loops are in the in lanes, and the ramps are all less visually distracting arguably there is more design and display in Elvira hey, let's party. different elements of the table are, are depicting side characters to the Elvira mythos I think some vampire table should probably have a captive ball that acts as a stake. 
and you would hit that captive ball and it would go up towards a standing target um, and that would be driving a stake through the heart uh, of a vampire. See, I wouldn't say that the angles on Elvira's table are particularly any are are particularly great, but I still feel like they're better than Bram Stoker's Dracula. <laughs> Thematically, this does feel like a more fun table, something I'd have more interest in looking at. That has a lot to do with the theme and very little to do with the actual table. Hmm. They definitely were trying to use voice lines from the movie and at a certain point it that is very similar to what happened with the Lego games where they and about the time they made the Lego Lord of the Rings and Lego Hobbit games they decided to just use voice lines only from the Hobbit and Lord of the Ring movies and thus it's a very weird and off-putting experience uh, because you're just using these snippets of pre-recorded footage Instead of having something custom voiced or recorded. I wouldn't even particularly call Elvira a great table. And see, what it wants me to do is a double slide, which would be hitting the second left ramp uh, the ramp second from the left two four times I think in a row if that's not super difficult to pull off I, I'm sure if I put an hour into it I could pull it off fairly easily Now I will say for Bram Stoker's table, as I'm not playing it, I did like the green mist idea. I did, I, I think it was an experiment worth testing to have a bunch of under, to, under the table mechanics that, that you move balls around. I think it was an experiment worth having to have a nine ball multi-ball. Um, but you probably needed to think of a better way to have pulled that off. Um, basically make it a jackpot reward or make it a mode that happens a lot easier or just make it your only multi-ball. It doesn't make a lot of sense to continue playing Elvira, though. So instead, let's play Class of 1812, which I think also deserves some reference. Hmm. Eighteen twelve has a center peg. So that can be very beneficial still. I think there's a there's a vampire. Yeah, there's flying bats. 
at the very least, a Dracula type character on this table. Although, on this table, the Dracula character isn't isn't particularly focused on. Ah, uh, yeah. Um. We look up here. There is the vamp, the tramp character, which is the sexy lady vampire, and then the uh, cliche Dracula with the widow's peak character. Hmm. This is a stern pinball table. Now, while the audio is wrong for Phantom of the Opera here, this definitely visually feels more in line with what you would expect from a vampire table. Here you've got the, the victim in Christine Die being shown with vampire with with not Dracula but the Phantom of the Opera behind it. You have some emphasis on darkness with the lights and the red. Notice all that the red that is playing here for the ramps. This is actually the only table I've ever seen that done with. Um, and this table arguably does have a less is more approach where it, there aren't a massive amount of things to taking up the top part of the table. Like there's a fairly decent amount of empty room. I'd say the ramp idea is, is bad on this table and I think some of the angles on this table are pretty bad. But this is way more focused than Dracula. I, I kind of know the shots I'm going for. This arguably may be a little too simplistic and a little too one note a table since it is mostly focused around just getting the ball into the uh, under the chandelier or under the stairs. It does share a fairly difficult left ramp shot but even even in that compared to the Bram Stoker table I'd say that this is better designed it's that that ramp is slightly easier to pull off I, I like that this table is kind of announcing what you're hitting I feel like you should have audio files playing on modern tables that are either telling you what to shoot or what you have shot. More likely I'd like it to tell you what to shoot and have a running narrative as far as what you're supposed to, what, what you're supposed to do. one has a traditional plunger too which I which obviously they started to having to get away from that once they started introducing auto auto launchers which auto launchers were the definite next big thing I think part of the problem with this table is 
the fact that the angles are just really off for hitting um, for, for what you're for hitting the under the ramp area but you could have easily taken the idea of the raising and lowering chandelier on this table and turned it into a rising and lowering coffin for a Dracula table. I mean, so much so that I half feel like this was originally a pitch for a Dracula table, and maybe they couldn't get the license until several years later, and so then they took the concept and reskinned it to to be a. Um, Phantom of the Opera license instead. Because like, otherwise it, it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense that you would e even bother to try and license Phantom of the Opera. Unless there was a Phantom of the Opera movie that came out, which maybe there was at that time. Um, I know there was later. Shoot the catwalk it says. Easier said than done. I just got another standard gold done. Hmm. Yeah, I'm doing better on this table. And see, this was a table I didn't even really want to play, so the fact that I'm willing to play it now shows my standards have been lowered by by the Bram Stoker's table. Yeah, I would definitely take this table design, start from this point, and make adjustments to make a bronze stoker's table then before I would take the design of the current Bram stoker's table and try and make adjustments because this feels a lot closer to something I want to play and it actually isn't even that close See that got the double your score achievement. Do not fear me. Yep, nineteen ninety three. So I suppose since we're just kind of wasting time at this point we should just see if there's some major adjustments you could do i feel like you're never gonna run into anything here that really adjusts things greatly because the only thing i could think is a feature adjustment at some point would maybe help just a little bit like increasing the ball saver of obviously auto extra balls certainly lowering the amount of things needed to score certainly would be nice pre-lit pre-light no is that lit i suppose pre-lit v mode None? I don't wonder what that means. V mode award, no. Oh, I guess pre light video mode means that you immediately start video mode, so you might want to turn that to yes. Castle lock time could go up higher. Castle jackpots, jet timers, pre lit coffin. That would be very helpful for me. Um, but even if the coffin was pre lit, 
I don't think that helps too much. A lot of, thi a lot of these things potentially being pretty lit. Interesting, you also seeing that the text is just being overwritten, so whatever default programming they have is was not really designed to handle certain longer words. There's a lot of adjustments specifically for this table, but I'm not super surprised by that either because there's just so much going on on this table. You could take one third of the three multiballs and um, one of the three multiball modes and just focus on that uh, completely. And you probably could have done that for a lot of the other stuff. Hmm. The magnet. If you disable the magnet, I wonder how that would work. Family mode, no. What's not family friendly? The the ooing and the lying of the woman being um being bit. Game over unlock. I don't know what that even means. Welcome to my home. And yeah, once again, it's just glitched. Like if you actually have operator mode enabled, it just doesn't actually work half the time. I have seen it work a couple Welcome times. To my home. Right. So. With ball control, can I get the ball into like the back sinkhole? Yes, can I get it into the coffin would be the real one. Because that's what, what I would need to, to do. And see, there's a ramp here that pops up. And that's how you sink into the coffin. Without pulling that off, you can't really do anything. And notice how, even with ball control, that nearly ejected the ball all the way out. You think you can destroy me with your eyes? And see, the, the focus here is is the elements of the story in which Dracula turns into a bunch of rats and turns into a bunch of uh, bats and controls animals. It's funny this is blinking but it's not actually seemingly accomplishing anything. If I hit this, my revenge has just begun. Yeah, it seems like you start rats mode, and then you can see this is five million. And that's all the rats. that Lux Castle Ball lit. So it feels like I am the last of my kind. Ten altar rats at thirteen. Hmm. Things like feels like you have to get really lucky to get up to fifteen holes in the altar. I have to hit a lot. And f the way it feels is that there actually isn't anything there, so... There's a sinkhole that's not quite lined up with the graphics of the 3D model. Yeah, there's 
nine more minutes. I'd also say this table does not really feel like it's um it's got a main goal per se. I never drink. Because we can't do the element that we would like to do, uh, which is the coffin multiball. <laughs> See, that's the special. And that starts a quick two ball multi ball. And that's pretty much the only thing I can do because I could try and like knock a ball into the sunk sinkhole there. In the mystery and try and get mystery rewards. But that's about all I can do. To start a mystery again, what or what I have to hit. Hmm. Now it's funny, you get a different animation in the asylum, but the, the animation doesn't change anything. By your 18th time you've hit the sinkhole, you've got rats a third time. How did I get a ball walked? Tell, explain that one to me. How in the world would I have gotten the ball at the ramp? Unless you can come back over here and hit that. So you want to get them really close. But if you go too close, you won't get a full score. Okay. Let's hit the altar one more time and just see if that would light a special. Nope, I don't think so. And your in lanes were late. Do not fear me. But yeah, there's nothing else I can really do. Because I cannot get up that ramp. Which once again. Ball control has just completely failed me as far as actually being useful. So even if you want to cheat and you just are trying to get a really high score, you're going to end up, in this case, just doing the rats mode multiple times. You are the love of my life. Alive again. The still very distracting art where I want to just play the replay and instead it's making me watch them dance for 20 seconds breaking the flow of gameplay yeah I 
think this definitely needs to be our last game because we've got we're going longer and longer. Let out a no I think, generally speaking, if if I was going to run into another table that was so that felt so left-handed oriented, in the sense that the left flipper has to make the the best shots, you um, are safe with me. I I would probably not be very satisfied with that either. See, the game says free play, so I don't know why it thinks it's in free play mode. I just cannot get up that ramp. Bring that ramp closer to the middle of the field and, and make that angle less sharp would be my suggestion there. Or have a sinkhole that allowed you to to hit a auto launcher Blood is too precious uh, in this time. yeah i am not interested in in that table all i mean i've been saying that so the only thing i wanted to figure out is was this was a Williams table. Um, so let's just, I guess, check the leaderboards. As far as overall scores, we've got 50 billion to 20 billion in the first table. Which, what, what was my highest score? My highest score put me in the top. 15,000 just barely at 275 million and then weekly that puts me in the 32nd place of what I suspect is going to be less than 100 yep 94 and on a Tuesday and then monthly as the sixth day of the month I'm in 53rd place of what I bet is probably closer to three or four, five hundred people. Nope, 149. So yeah, I think I'm probably somewhat in line with everybody else's opinion um, as far as Dracula. We also never really figured out who that red-haired lady was in the mist. So, so far on this row, I've been unimpressed by the Doctor Who licensed product. Um, showing the old seven Doctors was never really going to be a great sell anyways. I've been unimpressed by Fish Tales, which is far too busy. And then I've absolutely loved Getaway, which I put in the top ten. And then unimpressed with Dracula. So ideally, what we would like to see is a if that says gladiators um a th good table here a at least one good table between the license of judge dread and last action hero and a good table here that way we can have at least three good tables to balance out the um three bad tables it, it would be 50 50 at that point Actually, there'd be four good tables and four bad tables for this row. Um, that being said, if it did turn out that these next four are all pretty terrible, we have Star Trek The Next Generation and Twilight Zone, which is probably the best table and second best table ever. And then we've got a decent shot amongst the remaining five tables 
or six tables um, in an extra to be good also. So there's a lot of potential there. Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media, there's a whole bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wish list. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.